Okay, you're going to have three problems here. Two of the three are not very long. There's a third one that is. You've got to read the problem and know what you're finding. Basketball is thrown from a height of 6 feet with a velocity of 40 feet per second. Find its maximum height. So a maximum problem, you don't mess around with boxes. You make the big parabola. You're finding the vertex when you find the maximum. Make an xy coordinate. And the way you find the x is by applying the formula opposite of b divided by 2 times a. So we know we need x to the second, then the x, then the constant equals y. And I can start filling that out right away because it's gravity. Okay? So 40 feet, so negative 16. Okay? 40 feet per second, that's your x. Now before that, you had 6 feet. So you're going to insert 6 feet into the constant. Now don't put 0 there, okay? You're finding the top. You need the y to stay there because you need the x and the y. So finding the x, we apply opposite of b, which would be negative 40, divided by 2 times a. So it would be 2 times negative 16. So that's negative 32. And then you divide negative 40 by negative 32 and you get 1.25. Now to find the y, what you do is you simply insert the 1.25 into the equation for x. It's that easy. Okay. So negative 16 parentheses 1.25 to the second plus 40 parentheses 1.25 plus 6. 31. So go put that in for y. Okay. X is the time, that's the seconds, and 31 is your feet. 31 is the answer you put down here, 31 feet. Seconds, feet. Okay, next problem. Okay, a basketball is thrown in the air from a height of 6 feet at an initial velocity of 40 feet per second. Find the ball's height after 2 seconds. So now you're not finding the maximum. So underline feet and seconds and do your side boxes. Okay, and the equation is going to be here. So I'm not finding the maximum. So, so feet and seconds. So seconds is x, feet is y. So per feet per second. Feet per second is 40, 40 times x. Again, we know what's happening here. It's going up and down, pulled by the force of gravity. That's negative 16. So you go up, come down. So before that, you got 6 feet. Please label it feet. Don't just put 6. But then we have something that looks a little different. We, on the other side down here, put two, but it's not two feet, it's two seconds. And that's a little bit of a game changer, okay? So you slot it the same way. So negative 16, then the 40, then the 6. This is your constant. Now, 2 is not going to go in for y, okay? You write 2 seconds. Seconds equals x, so 2 goes in for x. Well, there's two x's, so we replace them both with 2's. We're going to put parentheses here to separate them. The y is going to stay. I'm not replacing the y. Okay, so I need to solve for y. Y is not to the second power, it's to the first. So you're just applying linear properties. So the Y is by itself, so just plug the other side into the calculator and you have it. So negative 16, 2 to the second plus 40, and then 2 plus 6. You got 22. So that wasn't that bad, huh? Okay, next problem. As you can see, it keeps repeating the same information, but you're just finding different things from the problem. A basketball is thrown into the air from a height of 6 feet with a velocity of 40 feet per second. Find how many seconds it takes a ball to get to 20 feet in the air. Okay, so you have feet and seconds. 
So again, you're not finding the maximum. Okay. So per feet per second. Okay, feet per seconds 40, 40 times x. Okay, so up, down. So you started at six feet. I know this gets repetitive, okay? And after the 40, you see 20 feet. Now it's actually 20 feet, okay? So this is gonna, we're going to work this different than the last problem. So you have negative 16 and then 40. Put that 6 in the constant slot. And now 20 is feet this time. And feet equals y. So 20 is going in for the y. So write it out. And after you replace it, you got to solve for x now because y is out. X is to the second this time, so there's two answers. See, on that last problem, I had Y left, and it was just to the first. Okay, so there's one answer. But now I have X to the second, so there's X second with X. you got to apply your factoring properties. Okay, so get that 20 out of there because you need zero, and that can go with the 6. So you have negative 16, 40, and then 6 minus 20 is negative 14. So you see there are three terms, so set it up like it's three terms. GCF table. There's no x, there is a negative, 16, 40, and 14. So 14, 16 is not there. 14, no 16, okay. 14, 16, and 40, so it would be 2. Then you take out the 2, and you divide by negative 2 up here. Sorry, I took it out. I should have divided first. So it's 8x to the second, negative 20x, positive 7. Okay. So that's out, and now this is my A, this is my B, this is my C. Put down there that A is 8x to the second power. So if off in the off chance I do find it for my table and I make the parentheses, I'm putting 8 in front of the x, not 1. Okay. So one, 8 times 7 is 56. Positive, that's a match. Okay. So 56 divided by 1 is 56. You're trying to add to negative 20. Okay. 56 divided by 2, that ain't it, it's negative 57. That's not, it's too wide, so there's a chance I can get closer to it. Okay, now add those. That's still too wide, but keep going. If it's too wide, you keep going. If it's too narrow, then you know you can't find it, okay? 3 is a decimal. Now 56 divided by 4, 4 and 14. Okay, now you're too narrow. You'll never get back to it, so QF. So, opposite of B, opposite of B, plus or minus D square root, B squared minus 4AC, B squared minus 4AC, over 2A, over 2A. Okay, so the opposite of B is 20, positive 20 now. B is negative 20. For A, A is 8, and C is 7, and then A is 8, okay? So, cross this out. You don't need that anymore because you, you can't factor the rest of the problem. 20 in front, 2 times 8 is 16, then make your square root and figure out what goes inside. So, parentheses, negative 20 to the second, minus 4, 8. 7. 176, now find the square root of 176. So second, next to the 7, 13.27. Okay. So that's what you're putting after this. Then find the two answers. 20 plus 13.27, click equals, divide by 16. 2.08.
20 minus 13.27 divided by 16, 0 0.42. Now, if these are both positives, put them both over here, okay? That just means it's 0 0.242 seconds on the way up to get to 20 feet, and on the way down, it'd be 2.08. If they're both positive, put them both. Okay, now we're going to start this over again. Football is punted from a height of 3 feet above the ground with an initial velocity of 45 feet per second. Find the maximum height. Okay, maximum, you don't set up boxes. That's the vertex. So read what you're being asked to find. Okay, so we know the formula that finds that is the opposite of B divided by 2 times A. Okay, so you go right to your x second, x constant equals y equation. And we're talking gravity, okay, so we know that negative 16 goes here. If the feet per second, 45, that's your x, that goes here. Before that, you had 3. Now, you're not putting anything in for the y. Okay, leave that because you have to get an X and the Y. Okay, so A, B, C, so the opposite of positive 45 is negative 45, and then 2 times negative 16 is negative 32. Then you divide negative 45 by negative 32. 1.41, if you put 1.40, that's fine, okay? Now, to find the y, when you know the x and you have to find y, you just replace your y's with 1.41. And then y is all by itself, one answer, and then I just plug it in. Thirty-four I put that up in the coordinate so you know that you're done, okay? And remember, this is the time, that's seconds, and this is feet, okay? The feet is actually what you put, 34.64 feet. On a maximum, always put the Y value, okay? Okay, next problem. Football is punted from a height of 3 feet above the ground with an initial velocity of 45 feet per second. After how many seconds, it, find how many seconds it takes a football to reach a height of 25 feet. Okay, so we are not finding the maximum here. You got your feet and your seconds, and you need to write an equation and actually solve it. Okay, so I, I'm trying to help this out a little bit. By, if you don't see maximum down there, you got it should be setting it up this way. So feet and seconds. Seconds is x, feet is y. So per feet per second. Okay, so the feet per second is 45 times x. Okay, that's going up and it's going down. Pulled by the force of gravity, which is negative 16. Okay, so before the 45 feet per second, you see 3 feet. After it, you see 25 feet. So, x second, x, the constant equals y. So, negative 16, followed by 45, and then this 3 is your constant. Okay, now 25 feet. Which letter is represented by feet? So feet equals y, so feet goes in for y. Okay, so there's two answers because you now you have x and you have to solve for x and x the letter that you have remaining is to the power of two, meaning it has two answers. And there's also an x there to the first power, which means you have to factor. Oh, not equals zero. It's equal to 25. My bad. I'm sorry. It's 25. 25 doesn't go away. So you have to get rid of the 25 and come up with the zero, and you would do that with your plus 3. Now you're at zero. So you have negative 16, 45. 
3 minus 25 is negative 22. So now you see your three terms. So PCF and the table. Remember, put A down there for later in case on the off chance we actually get the table to work. Okay, there's no X on the end. There is a negative in front. 16, 45, and 22. Okay, so 16, no. 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 Twenty-two. Now forty-five is not there, so it's just one. But since it is negative one, we are actually going to put it over there and do it. So it's positive sixteen x to the second, negative forty-five x, positive twenty-two. And then I'm going to tell you a new thing here for this class, just for my class. This is my rule. A times C. If you get a number on the T-chart bigger than 100, just go to QF right away. It doesn't mean you can't ever find it, but that's going to be a new rule. Okay? If it's over 100, you can, don't have to do the T-table. Just go to the quadratic formula. Opposite of B, plus or minus the square root, so I don't really care what A is there. B squared minus 4AC, B squared minus 4AC over 2A, over 2A. Okay, so the opposite of the B, remember ABC is here, not up here. you got to label that. That would be positive 45. B would be negative 45. Then A would be 16, C would be positive 22, and A would be positive 16. Okay, So I don't really care about this anymore now that I know I'm not going to solve it with parentheses, the factoring. So 45 is in front. Under it, 2 times 16 is 32. Now you draw the square root and you figure out what you're going to be taking the square root of. So parentheses... Negative 45 to the second, minus 4, 16, 22. 617, so I find the square root of this. Twenty-four point eight four. Okay, so you take 45 plus 24.84, click equals, divide by 32, 2.18. Then you take 45 minus 24.84, click equals, divide by 32, 0 0.63. Now since I got two positive answers, I'm going to put both of them right here. Okay. That means it's at that. That means it's, it comes to 25 feet on the way up and on the way back down. Okay. Then the last problem is going to be a quick one. A football is punted from a height of three feet above the ground with an initial velocity of 45 feet per second. How high is the ball after 1.5 seconds? So again, you are not finding the maximum here. Okay. Not finding the vertex. That's on the maximums. So seconds is x, feet is y, and the feet per second is uh, 45, 45 times x. So this goes up, it comes down by the force of gravity, which is negative 16. Okay, so before that you got 3 feet. Now, at the after it, it says 1.5, but it don't say feet. It says seconds. <clears throat> so you got x to the second, then x, then constant equals y. So you know you got negative 16. You know you got 45, and you know you got 3. But you don't just put a seconds in for y, because seconds is x. So 1.5 seconds goes in for x, and I like that, so then there's two x's, I put 1.5 in for both of them. So it's different than the last one. Now, what letter do you have remaining? 
you have y remaining this time, and it's not to the second power, it's to the first power, so then you apply the linear properties. Well, since y is by itself, I don't have to do any properties. I just, sub I just plug the, evaluate the other side into my calculator. Thirty-four point five. Okay, that's the one answer. Thirty-four point five 